ever wanted to go somewhere so expensive it makes you want to gouge out your own eyeballs and sell them on eBay. Have you ever wanted to go somewhere where the locals speak far good, better good English than I do? Have you ever wanted to go somewhere where on public display they have these sexist jokes? Is this is of course Oslo, Norway. Let's run over the basics. So, here is Norway and here is Oslo. Now is Oslo worth visiting? Is there much to do? Well, there's the Oslo Fjord, great if you like wet and mist. There's the Folk Museum, great if you like peasants and mud. And then there's Oslo City Hall, great if you like having migraines and magic eye puzzles. Oh, look at that, a dolphin. And also these. So how do you get into Oslo? Well, if you're a cheap git like me, you'll probably end up landing in Torp Airport. It's an hour and a half away, and you'll get a bus ride through fields and tunnels. And then you'll reach Oslo city centre, where the adventure really begins. Oslo is fantastic at selling its history and its heritage. You get a real vibe by walking down the streets and visiting the many museums. But by far the best museum is the Viking Ship Museum. You walk in and literally straight away you are met with an actual real Viking ship. It's huge, you're like wow this is incredible, but there's not one, there's not two, but there's three. Well the third one's more like a bunch of planks of wood and stuff. Now at the back of the museum it gets really interesting because that's where they have all the different objects and artifacts that were found in and amongst the Viking ship burials. So there's things like wooden carved wagons, barrels with like a little butter on it indicating the trade of the Viking network, there's carved Viking artwork, I mean there's some boring stuff as well like a shoe and like a toothpick or something. But generally, you get a real vibe of the Viking Age, and it is so interesting seeing all these different objects, what they meant for the Vikings, what they meant for that age, it is so fascinating. The single worst thing about Oslo is that it is, oh my god, expensive. Seriously expensive. Here's a quick example. A guy walks into a shop. Hi there, I would like to purchase a bottle of water. How much is it? Of course you can. It will cost you 94,626 krona, 4 ski dogs and a Toblerone bar. It's actually okay, I'll just go thirsty. But it gets to the point where it ruins your trip. Like literally, you can't do anything, you can't go to a restaurant, you can't buy anything. It makes things so difficult. The really weird thing about Oslo is creepy naked men, more creepy naked men, ball of naked creepy babies and men with serious anger management issues. This is the interesting park and sculpture museum dedicated to Gustav Vigeland. It's quite good actually. The best way to describe this place would be that you appreciate the skill, you appreciate the creativity, but then you realise you are literally looking at your worst childhood nightmares come true. It's like looking into the abyss of a athletic, baby, sweaty, crazed, granite, stone, orgy happening all at once. So, what to get from Oslo? Oslo is full of weird and wonderful things, but the best crap to buy would be Nordic woven clothes. You can buy hats, scarves, gloves, sweaters, socks, anything you want. They come in a whole range of sizes, colours and patterns. Whenever you wear them, you'll be carrying around with you a little piece of Norway. So, what are the best day trips from Oslo? Two places. One, Holmen Kolbakken. And two, oh god, Snog, Snog, Snogs, Snog, 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 Oh, you know what, screw this. One, Oslo Ski Jump. And two, the big lake near Oslo. Oslo Ski Jump is actually really good. You can go there, walk around the ski jump, go inside. There's a whole big panoramic view of Oslo. There's a skiing museum. There's creepy trolls. I'd highly recommend it. Whereas the big lake near Oslo is so chilled. It's so relaxed. You get there on the metro, you walk around the lake, you walk in the forest. Honest, it is so nice. Let's finish this off with the final scores. Right then, does Oslo have a natural landmark? Yes, 
Oslo Fjord. You can take a boat out, have a really good day trip and explore the islands. Does Oslo have a natural object? Yes! I'm going to go for Darwinius. This is the first ever primate fossil, so it's in a sense our oldest relative. Plus, it looks like it's doing a thriller dance. Does Oslo have a built landmark? Yes, I'm going to go for Oslo City Hall. Now, okay, it might not look much on the outside, but this is where they have the award ceremony for the Nobel Peace Prize. Not like crappy prizes back in Sweden. This is the main one. Does Oslo have a famous historical object? Yes, I have to go for the Osberg ship. It is truly one of the world's great treasures. And then finally, does Oslo have a traditional or modern art masterpiece? It has to be the very famous Scream by Edvard Munch. So, Oslo comes in with a score of 5 out of 6. Nice one, Oslo. So, if you want to step back to the Viking Age, get freaked out by granite statues of naked babies, and starve because you can't afford anything, then Oslo is the place for you. Coming up next, London, 